I don't know how that's even arguable, but okay. Um, but whatever your uh, your impressions are of Ghost, uh, I, I, I just, again, I to be clear, because I'm so often taken out of context, it's not even funny. I am not saying what they're doing is bad. I am not saying that it's not a good song. I'm not saying they're not talented. I'm saying that it's really fascinating to hear a band sound like that and look like that and hear it be embraced by metal. Mike in Detroit. Hi, Mike. Hey, Eddie. How you doing? I'm great. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about Ghost. Uh, I've been in the Ghost since 2013. In fact, I, I have a group on Facebook called Ghost American Ministries with close to 10,000 members who just love this band. They love everything that they do. I personally got attached to the band because I, like you, am a big Kiss fan. And I love the fact that in the beginning, not now, but in the beginning, they really went out of their way to keep the identities a secret, right. a la Kiss. But of course, with the internet, that didn't last very long, you know? Well, it didn't last because it. of a lawsuit. It's because he got sued or something by a former member, and then that got out into the press or something. Although, although that, that definitely blew it wide open. But if you were a hardcore fan, it really wasn't that hard to find out who they were. You know what right. I mean? Right. People kind of knew for a while what the deal was. But let me ask you this, Mike, because you clearly are way in, more into it than I am and no way more than I do. D has, has there been photos of him, to Tobias or, or Tobias, however you say his name? Have, have there been photos of him like now out and about? Um, th there's some photos that come out every blue moon. He's still, I, I personally have met him over 10 times to the shows. He's very approachable, but uh, he has a strict policy that he still does not want to be photographed with the fans, although there have been photos that have leaked where uh, famous uh, rockers like Glenn Danzig or Phil Anselmo show up backstage, and I guess, you know, he's not going to tell them no, that they can't take a photograph with them. So, you know, those photos leak out, but then usually they get deleted off the uh, social media accounts, I guess, whenever Ghost's management or something says something to the fact that, you know, hey, we really don't want his photo out there like that. But obviously with the lawsuit, um, that made it kind of hard because everybody knew who was in the band. And like you said, uh, he doesn't have an entirely new band now. I think he called them Hired Guns. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily what I'd call them, but I guess, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but he still runs the show. And right now this album is just, I just think it's going to blow up. I think uh, this, this is going to make their way from the club circuit to the arena circuit. Well, I, they, it already has to some degree. Thank you, Mike, for the call and, and your insights. It already has. They've, they have two arena dates announced, Los Angeles and Brooklyn. They are actually going in as a headline to two arenas in America. That is a huge step. So that's a very ambitious step, and they are well, way past the club level already. They are at, they are at theaters and beyond right now. And they're high up on festival billing. I think Rocklahoma this weekend, when I see them, they're one or they're, they're two or three from the top on on the main stage. So that that's already happened. The the anonymity thing is interesting. That that kind of pulled you into their music. And then when you talk about guys like people like Glenn Danzig and Anselmo wanting to take pictures with them and stuff, uh, that's kind of my point. I don't think people like that would be drawn to the music of Ghost so much if they didn't have that dark image that they conjure. If they didn't have, just like our caller said, he was drawn into it because of that. So it's really a two-headed two thing. People are coming in and getting interested because of the image and the mystique, and then people are coming into it just because they like the music or they like both or they're pulled in because it's dark, and that's kind of maybe where the metal thing is coming from. You know, that's where the Danzig, Anselmo, Kirk Hammett thing, you know, Kirk Hammett's into like horror movies and stuff. He collects stuff. So you see a band like this, you hear all this stuff, and then, oh yeah, the music's catchy. Okay, I'm just going to go with it. I think, that, I think the reason why the metal stuff and the metal following and support is there is, is, is absolutely initially because of the look. Because if you came out without that look just sounding like this, 
it's not going to be it's not going to first be embraced by that world like it has been now will that world continue to embrace them if eventually they have to tone down this image if they have to uh, if they continue to make songs that are poppy like this, like this is the most, I, I don't know all of their music, but I know a cross section of it. This is by far the most poppy thing that they've done and it's doing great. So do they continue to go chase this? Because if you want to keep going back to the kiss model, kiss went down this rabbit hole too, a little later in their career where they had a huge hit with, I was made for loving you at disco but while it was blowing up at disco and with young people at the time in the pop world it had alienated their whole original fan base so when they did the follow-up album to that and it didn't have a hit single both the pop people were gone because there was no hit and the fan base was gone because they felt like they traded and sold out on them now, I don't think this is anywhere close to that yet because this is kind of a progression for where this band has been going. And they were never, they never sounded like Slayer. The only other guy I saw comment about their music versus their look and the disconnect was, was ironically, Kerry King of Slayer. Because he's a metal, he's a, a out and out metal guy. And he was like, I think they look cool, but their music is wimpy. It does, it's, not, it's not anything to do with this. He's the only guy I saw make a statement like that. And Kerry's entitled to his opinion. He's a very outspoken guy. And, he, and I respect that about him, whether I agree or not. But everyone else is like, down with the whole scene. Hearing him sound one way and look one way. So again, it's just fascinating. I'm not, lo I'm not looking for anything here beyond kind of pulling it apart and just, just kind of acknowledging that it's a really, really interesting thing going on. Uh